All right, hello again, everybody. Um, this weekend coming up here, uh, today's March 13th, um, so 16th, 17th, I guess, is the Battle to End Alzheimer's 2024 AOSGT in beautiful Westminster, Maryland at Tables and Towers, where I play most of my tournament games. Um, this is the second year running of this. It's a charity GT um, to benefit Alzheimer's research um, run by JC and Ted um, at Tables and Towers. Um, it was a lot of fun last year. It should be fun this year. Um, there's some extra stuff in addition to the tournament games. Uh, it's got to be in the pack somewhere. Maybe not. Not in this pack. Anyway, there's I th there, there's extra charity stuff. There's raffles. There's I think you can like you know pay to pie somebody in the face as long as they consent to being pied in the face. Um, fun stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it'll be a good time. And have 65 players that looks like registered. Um, I think there were a couple drops, but it's going to be at least 60. Um, so that is a great turnout, and it looked like a couple people are traveling from elsewhere as well, um, a little further away than usual, um, which is great. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I'm running Slaves to Darkness, uh, as my last few videos have been about. Um, I've tweaked my list just slightly a little bit from um, the last video, so I'll, I'll talk about that for just a minute when I'm looking at lists. but. I figured I have a little time. Uh, my army is plausibly painted. It's not 100% done yet, but everything is is at least good to go on the table. Um, so I figured I would do a little a little list preview show for anyone who is interested. Um, so my just looking down the list, my first impression was that I was surprised to see so many night haunts. And there were also a couple Lumineth players, which I have not seen Lumineth in a bit. Um, I've only ever played Lumineth once. <laughs> um, so it was good to see a couple Lumineth in here. Um, there's some Skaven, there's some cities, there's a lot of new Flesh Eater courts. Um, but overall, it seems like a very well-balanced field, which is good to see. Um, I think there's... Yeah, there's only one KO, which makes me happy, because <laughs> I'm horrible and prejudiced. Um, how many corn? I, I'm very surprised that there's only two corn players, because corn is very good. Um, so yeah, twice as many Night Haunt as corn. Um, so yeah, since I was surprised to see so many Night Haunt, I figured that's the lists I would look at first. Um, so first we have Alex. Let me just highlight these so I don't go out of order. Um, Alex Schaefer of Tilt. I think I have these in the right order, these tabs. Um, he's running Scarlet Doom, so this is the mortal impact hits from Blade Geists. Uh, I believe it's a 5 up for every model in the unit, so it's not one of the ones that depends on how far you charge. Um, so he's got a Cruel Ghast, a Spirit Torment, the Guardian of Souls, and Rykenor the Grimhaler. I do love me Raikonar. He's he's just a fun, very um, flavorful character. He does extra damage to like priests and wizards, which is good in the wizard GHB. Um, so I dig that. And then I believe this is two by twenty blade geists, five hex wraiths, two units of chain rasps, and two units of ten blade geists. So lots of blade geists to do mortals on impact, and then the mandatory <laughs> at least one unit of Banshees. Um, so he's got the Banshees to help with uh, dealing with magic. And that's all in a two drop. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do too much analysis because there's 60 lists to get through and I don't want this to be two hours long. Um, but there's Night Haunt number one. Number two is Andrew Simmons, uh, who has been running a lot of... Um, He's been running uh, Sons of Behemoth for a while, so good to see Andrew bring out the Night Hunt. Uh, this is also Scarlet Doom with 2x20 Blade Geists, uh, 5 Hex Wraiths, but then the headline is that he's got Nagash. 
So that is pretty sweet. And then Guardian of Souls General with Shaman of the Chilled Lands. So all those spells. And a Tomb Banshee. Um, and a Purple Sun. So increasing the rend on, on everybody that's not Night Haunt. Um, seems like it could be cute. Third up on Night Haunt, we have Chad Griffith with Emerald Host. So good to see a little thing different than um, just all Scarlet Doom. Um, I think, I'm, I don't know, I've always thought Emerald Host is real cute, and especially in this GHB where everybody's bringing some like low wound wizards, it could be nice to get them off the board in a couple turns with the curse uh, if you roll well. Um, so he's got the Wielder of the Blade. This is the new uh, Warcry or Underworld's Warband, whichever one it is. Uh, he has Olander, a Dreadblade Harrow, two Spirit Torments, and Alrock the Drowner. Um, so already this is screaming, like, not optimal to me, but maybe a lot of fun. Because uh, you've got, like, Alrock in the boat to fly people around. you got some of the new stuff. Olander's always cool. Um... But I'm always surprised to see Night Haunt with no cool guest, because uh, that just seems like a core thing in the uh, army to me. Then he's got two units of Reapers, a unit of Spirit Hosts, and then I think I think this is 20 Chain Rasps. I think they're 10 um, for 100. And he's got the rest of the Warcry Band and two units of Craven Throne Guard. I think those are the little um, crossbow dudes, and I think they're 80 for 5, so these are this is probably 2 by 10. Uh, and then he's got, again, the unit of Banshees. And then last but not least, uh, we have... Oh, <laughs> I should... There we go. Have to... Knight, Knight includes uh, Knights of the Pond, if you're searching, turns out. Uh, so the last Night Haunt is Jordan Benware. Benoir? Don't know. Uh, with, again, the third Scarlet Doom list. Um, a couple different Grand Strats here. We have... F actually... <laughs> They almost all have a different grand strat. So there's Fright or Flight, a Soul to Claim, Soul to Claim, and then Feed on Terror. So all going different routes with that. Um, and then this last list has Knight of Shrouds, uh, the Dreadblade Harrow, Olander, another Dreadblade Harrow, and two Guardian of Souls. So lots of doubling up in the heroes. Um, then 2x10 Blade Geists. 30, I think, Chain Rasps, so a big horde of Chain Rasps, um, Spirit Hosts, uh, oh, and then more, uh, yeah, so, all right, so four, four by ten Blade Geists, nobody, um, none of them are, are reinforced, but lots of Blade Geists to do the impact hits on the charge. So yeah, pretty cool to see some Night Hunt lists, and they're all pretty different, uh, so that is nice, we'll, we'll see which of them do well, hopefully all of them. Uh, let's see, other general comments. I believe there are four ogres here. Three of them are just the six, you know, Beast Riders lists, so I'm not going to go over those. Um, but the fourth one, uh, Corey Wiggins, is switching it up. This is Corey, who I've, I've complained about beating me before uh, with his stone horns. So he is instead busting out the Meat Fist today, which is interesting. Um, so he's got a Slaughtermaster and a Firebelly, so two casts, and um, the Slaughtermaster is the general, so he's got Blizzard, Hoarfrost, etc. Then he's got 3x6 Gluttons, a unit of 8 Iron Guts, and 2 Iron Blasters with 20 Noblars uh, for a screen, or to do their annoying little, oh you move near me, you gotta take mortal wounds. Um, happy to see... Happy to see him with the, the foot slogger ogre list. Uh, this should be cool. Um, one of my Warhammer chats, we were talking about ogres recently, and um, Jake, who I need to have on this show at some point, um, he was saying he likes 2x4 Iron Guts better. Looks like Corey's taking 8. We will see how it turns out. So that's the ogres. Um, I do see... I thought I saw a lot of Fire Slayers. I guess it's only two. Uh, so let's just go down the list. We have Adam Singh with Soul Blight Legion of Blood with Neferata, a Necro, 
White King on Steed, uh, the Vampire on Zombie Dragon, with of course the unrendable 3 up save. Uh, then he's got 3 by 20 zombies, a unit of 10 black knights, and a corpse cart. Uh, and the Grave Tide. It's got a Warlord Battalion, and that is it, so it's a bunch of drops. Um, but I like this, it's not just like, it's not total zombie spam. 60 zombies is like actually not that many zombies. Um, that's tolerable. So just a good like balanced list. I like it. Uh, then we've got Adrian Ibarra with Fangs of Sotek. Uh, they got a little bit of point hike, so let's see what this looks like. He's got Croak, Astrolith Bearer, Starseer, Starmaster. So that is like one less hero than I would have expected before. So that's a change. Uh, 10 Skinks, 5 Raptor on Chargers, 10 more Skinks, Chronomantic Cogs, Gotrek, and 3 Terror Wings. So this is a surprising Fangs of Sotek list to me. Uh, it sacrificed a lot of things to get Gotrek in there. I don't know if that's amazing, because I don't know if you really need Gotrek in Fangs of Sotek, but whatever. He's got him. Uh, then it's a Battle Regiment and Command Entourage, so it's like a 4 drop. And it looks like the Command Entourage was for, was for uh, extra spells. Alright, moving on. Alex Hamilton, Sylvaneth with Heartwood. I think there's a lot of Sylvaneth. Uh, I was going to mention... I guess there's... Alright, so there's four. Um, four Sylvaneth. Uh, but I was going to mention about our local meta. I think I've said before, there's a lot of Stonehorn players. Um, so that might be why you see people... I think there's a couple like Astral Templars in here, which I've considered taking um, to these local tournaments just because of how many Beast Riders there are. Um, and there, tend to, there does tend to be a lot of um, uh, Sylvaneth locally as well, so I'm not surprised to see some Sylvaneth. Uh, this is Belthanos, Alarial, a Branch Witch, 2x10 Dryads, 5 Tree Revs, and 6 Spite Rider Lancers, and the almost it seems mandatory in my experience, Spite Swarm Hive, which is an amazing endless spell, giving one unit um, plus three to move and plus three to charge. So you come out of teleporting from a woods or something and suddenly you only need a six instead of a, a nine to charge, which is great. Um, and I hope Belthanas does well, it's a cool model. Uh, it still sucks that it's not just Orion, but whatever. Uh, Andrew Hoffman has our first Stormcast Eternals, this is Hammers of Sigmar for the ward uh, on objectives. He's got Ionis, a Knight of Draconis, four Storm Drake Guard, four Storm Drake Guard, four Storm Drake Guard. Oh no, those are, sorry, those are two, two, two uh, Storm, Storm Drake Guards. Uh, that would be ridiculous if they were all fours. Um, and then a single one and the Comet. So that means, right, so the Knight of Draconis, I guess, has uh, Arcane Tome and Master of Magic to get out the comet uh, and he has celestial instincts as the mount trait i forget what that is whatever it's a bunch of dragons cool um can't go wrong with dragons dragons are cool uh andrew myers from tough crowd has maggot kid of nurgle with the befouling host with festus great and clean one gut rot spume harbinger of decay Articulous Slimux, and orgots demon spew and then four beasts of nurgle and a cockatrice so that just sounds like it's trying to throw beasts in Pinyu, and the Cockatrice is going to make it even harder to kill beasts, and then you got a bunch of characters to, to kill things, I guess. Cool. Uh, we already did this Night Haunt. Basil Inferrera has a Quattles Claw list, so Coalesced, which is great to see, uh, with a Skink Starseer, Croak, and an Astrolith Bear for the heroes. Uh, the Astrolith Bear has the Vengeful Defender uh, for the hero phase move if he is in uh, the Seraphon's territory still. Um, so I forget exactly how it works, but it's essentially it's if, if he's in the territory of the Seraphon still in the hero phase, he can make, I don't know if it's himself in one other unit or just two units, but he can give things a hero phase move, uh, which is good to speed the Coalesced up a little bit. Uh, so then we've got one let's see we've got one by ten source guard two by ten source warriors and looks like a unit of nine croxagor there's three moonstone hammers so that must be a double reinforced unit of crocs which is interesting 
Uh, we've got my favorite Hunters of Huanchi with the bolas, which I think are just great, uh, and then the Grave Tide. Cool list. Don't know how it will do. I, I, I'm very skeptical of nine croc scores, but good luck. Uh, I think Basil might be smarter than I am, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, Bill Hennessy, who kicked my butt last RTT uh, with the Flesh Eater Court, and it looks like he has not quite the same list he played me with. So it looks like he took out a second Marrow Scroll Herald from when he played me for 10 more Beast Flayers. So he's got the Double Arge Regent, uh, Gore Warden, oh that's new too, um, and a Herald for his hero setup now. Uh, and then 9 Crypt Horrors, 6 Crypt Horrors, 20 Ghouls, 2x3 Morbeg Knights, 20 Beast Flayers, and 10 Beast Flayers. So yeah, looks like he took out a Herald, he added the Gore Warden so that one of the Morbeg Knights can Deep Strike with it, and added 10 more Beast Flayers as well. Um, yeah, new effects seem real good. Um, I bet he'll do very well with that. Um, Bill Keeler, one of our two corn, has Bloodmaster. Well, let's see, he's in Bloodlords, so a bunch of blood letters probably. Um, he's got a Bloodmaster, a Slaughter Priest, Bellicor, fun, uh, Bloodthirster of Unfettered Fury, and Scarbrand. It's kind of the two Bloodthirsters you see together. 20 Blood Letters, Claws of Karanak, 10 Blood Reavers, and 5 Flesh Hounds. Skull Altar, and a unit of allied Razor Gores, which is interesting. Um, I think they're just very cheap. I guess he probably had 70 points left, and he's like, what do I take? That's the only thing that's 70 points. <laughs> um, whatever. Corn is always good. It almost doesn't matter what the exact units you take are, because like just the army rules are so strong. Um, Blaine Woodward from Big Chungus has an Astral Templars list. Uh, so he's got a Knight and Cantor, an Imperitant, Severeth, the Spirit of the Wind, allied in, which is interesting. A Lord Relictor. And then uh, the almost mandatory now, it seems, or at least very common, two units of Vanguard Hunters to be teleporting around getting battle tactics. And then a unit of Vanquishers, which got cheaper. Then he's got four Tempestors and two units of Annihilators with Meteoric Grand Hammers. Uh, so the Imperitants bringing those down within seven. They're doing splash AoE mortals when they land, and then mortals on the charge, and they hit like a truck. Although, I feel like since the uh, Stormcast book has come out, I feel like a lot of things have kind of caught up with how hard they hit, so they're not really an outlier anymore. Uh, and then three Vanguard Raptors with the long strike crossbows, and this is in a bun bunch of drops, because he's got Warlord and Wizard Finder. Um, so the Annihilators are in Wizard Finder along with uh, ch -ch 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 the Lord Relictor, it looks like. And then he's got... Oh, it doesn't say. Ugh. You gotta... That's annoying. So unfortunately, because of the app printout still not being updated with this, you have to manually add your holy commands when you save out your, um, your Stormcast list from the app which is super annoying, uh, and it looks like he didn't. So I'm wondering if he has either the call for aid to bring back Vanquishers, or if he has a uh, double shoot once per game on the Vanguard Raptors with long strikes. Uh, we will just have to wonder. Ah, uh, we did this next. Night Haunt. Ooh, Charles Wilson from Big Chungus, usually a Sylvaneth player, is bringing out the new feck. He's also in Hollow Morn uh, with an Arch Regent of Vargulf Cordier, uh, Marrow Scroll Herald, and Usharan. Fun to see Usharan. Uh, he might not be optimal, but he's super cool. He's got three, two, sorry, two units of Crypt Horrors. Um, at 260, I think these are six man units. And then a unit of probably 40 Crypt Ghouls at 320. Uh, then he's got a Zombie Dragon, the Chalice, Endless Spell, and the Charnel Throne. Uh, and he's got extra spells from... Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think he's just got an extra spell for Magnificent to get Drainage Transformation and Horfrost on the Arch Regent, um, which is interesting. All right, uh, Christian Ben did that. I think I did Christian's. 
No, I didn't. All right. There must be uh there must be either a father or a son pair or I clicked something wrong or whatever. Doesn't matter. Um anyway, Hammers of Sigmar. Yeah, I definitely didn't read this list. It's a Night Relictor, an Imperitant, and Indrasta, who I love. Uh two units of fulminators. Looks like just two each. Two by two fulminators, three units of vindictors. Two units of Annihilators with Grand, grand Hammers, and two Stormstrike Chariots. Um, I really like this list. It's similar to... I don't know. It's sort of similar to something I used to run. I love the Chariot. I love Annihilators. Um, and I hope it, that it does well. Uh, Indrasta has her aura of bringing back a model to like the Vindictors or the Annihilators, which can be nice, but I've never actually really gotten to work well enough to like do much. <laughs> so good luck. Um, hopefully it goes better for him than me. Uh, we have a Soulblade Varikos list. Virkos? Varikos? Virkos. Uh, with Radicar the Beast, Belladama, Vamp Lord, Targilius, two units of Direwolves, a unit of Reinforced Skeletons, and then two units of 20 Graveguard. I feel like this is a very classic looking Soulblade list that I haven't seen in a while. Um, Felt like Radicar was like all the rage and, and Graveguard when the book first came out. So interesting to see a more throwback kind of list. Um, Chris Gosselin from Warphammer is playing an Ametrica list. So he's got the Stone Mage, a Caligrave, Severith, and Avalanor. Um, Avalanor is the big special cow. He's also got one normal cow. Uh, and then 10 Stone Guard, 5 Dawn Riders, 10 Wardens. The Hishin's Twin Stones and Grave Tide for Endless Spells, and five more Dawn Riders, which are not core. Um, so one Dawn Rider unit is core because of the Wardens, and then the other one is not. Um, this seems pretty solid. It's not like leaning super hard into the Emetrica thing with like lots of Stone Guard or anything, but it seems like nice and balanced, and you've got the Stone Guard and the big cows is like maybe. I don't know, anvils, and I guess the cows do some damage too. I don't know. I'm, I'm acting like I know what this Emetrica list does, but I don't. Whatever. It's an Emetrica list. We'll see. Um, we have Connor Cell with uh, Cities of Sigmar Hello Heart um, playing the looks like elf version of Cities. So he's got two sorceresses, one sorceress on a black dragon, Ionis allied in. A fleet master and a battle mage. Then he's got 20 dread spears, um, 10 black guard, 10 steel helms, 2x10 corsairs, and then 20 executioners. So, uh, you know, some whatever is going to be in combat is getting the tenebrial blades to just ignore all armor saves, <laughs> which, you know, seems good with a bunch of attacks. Um, that should do all right. Uh, we already talked about Corey's Meat Fist list. Craig the Legend, 27. I wonder if he legally changed his name to that. Um, he's playing Lofnir, so probably Magma Droths, yes. So we got a Rune Father on Magma Droth, uh, Rune Smiter, and a Rune Master. Then we've got three Rune Sons on Magma Droth, so the usual complement of four Magma Droths. And then. A unit of Volkite Berserkers with Fire Steel Hand Axes, two Hearth Guard, and two Invocations. I believe Masters of the Forge just have an Invocation out at the end of the game. So against most armies, you just get it out as early as possible, and they can never get rid of it because they don't have priests. Although more unit more more armies are getting priests now with like Feck and um, cities can even take priests, corn. So it's it's maybe not as guaranteed as it used to be. Uh, our second, and I believe last, Blades of Corn is Daniel Goldfarb. He's got a Reapers of Vengeance list with Scarbrand, the Wrath of Corn Bloodthirster, a Skull Grinder. Don't see those very often. A uh, third Bloodthirster, this one of Insensate Rage with uh, Argath, King of Blades, to turn off uh, ward saves. And then a Slaughter Priest and a Ritualist. Then he's got just a ton of blood reavers one two three four units of blood reavers a unit of flesh hounds a unit of blood letters then the bleeding icon and the hex gorger skulls 
Um, which I saw the skulls more often. Well, I, I don't want to see the skulls more often, but I'm surprised I don't see the skulls more often with it being the magic GHB. Um, it may just be that corn with the five up spell shrug just straight up doesn't like need it that much. Um, they're already strong against magic. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is just a ton of chaff with um, some big scary bloodthirsters behind it. All right, moving on, we got a Skaven list from Danny M from the Mid-Atlantic Molly Whoppers. Um, he's got a Screaming Bell Gracier, the Vermin Lord Warbringer, three Plague Priests to get that tactic of doing your three prayers, uh, the Vermin Lord Warpseer with Levitate, it's interesting, uh, then 20 Clan Rats, 15 Sensor Bearers, 20 Clan Rats, three Plague Claws, intriguing uh and of course the not holes so he doesn't have the uh, warp grinder to like bring the plague sensor bearers in um from reserve so i'm wondering if the levitate is just to like cast levitate on the sensor bearers and then get over your screening um clan rats uh, or if there's some other play there that I'm, I'm i don't know about yet that i'm not smart enough to just see coming uh, Derek Simon, Peace Through Daka, has Soul Blight Grave Lords. This is a Legion of Night list, so the um, counter striking, or counter charging rather, uh, with a Vamp Lord, a Manfred, a Necro, Dreadblade Harrow, allied in from Night Haunt, I guess. That's interesting. I need to look up what a Dreadblade does. I'm going to do that right now. What does a Dreadblade do? All the Night Haunt lists, well, not all of them. Some of them had um, Dreadblades in them, and I don't actually remember what they do. Dreadblade Harrow. This is... He's move 12 because he's Night Haunt. Shocking. Four. He's got like the standard hero. Four, three threes. Ran one, two damage attacks. Ah, uh, okay. So he's got a teleport, which is maybe why he's in here. Uh, so at the end of move phase, you can remove him, set him up again, an inch away from terrain features, and nine from the enemy. And... His other thing is he can issue the same command as the general, but only if the general is Night Haunt, so that doesn't matter in this list, because this is Soul Blade. Uh, anyway, moving on. So I guess this is just a little fast guy that can teleport. Uh, we've got two units of Dire Wolves, a unit of 30 Skeletons, which will be a pain in the butt to kill, a unit of Fell Bats, and then 10 and 20 Grave Guards for the Hammers. So, seems like a pretty good list. Uh, da, 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 da. We got our first Gloom Spite list from Dan Lushner. He's got a Trog Boss, Trug, and a whole lot of trolls. So it's nine Rot Guts, three and three Rot Guts, and then three single Dank Holds and the Shrine. Not much to say about that. It's going to be a pain in the butt to kill all those trolls. Uh, Emma Mangles is back. I have not seen her at a tournament recently. Um, bringing the Maggotkin. With the Glotkin, Bloab, Morbidex Twiceborn, so two of the big monster guys, uh, Harbinger of Decay, uh, who's the priest, two units of Plague Bearers, a Rottmire Creed, a unit of Nurglings, and two little units of Furies, who are great little screens or objective grabbers, etc. Um, so yeah, good to see Emma back out at a tournament again. Uh, we've got Eric McDonald with another Coalist list. Um, so another Coatl's Claw with a double Carnosaur setup, and then we've got 2x6 Agrodon Lancers, 10 Saurus, and two Stegodons. Cool. I've not seen Stegodons in a while. I'm still scarred from, like, the old book when they were so good, when Thunder Lizards was amazing. Then again, I'm so happy that I was not stupid thinking that Hunters of Wanchi with the Bolas is a good unit, because the one game I, I played where I tested out a list on TTS, I brought a unit of them, and I really liked them, and I thought they're a good unit, and now people are taking them. So that's great. Love to not be stupid. Uh, anyway, Ezekiel with host of the Ever Chosen, with two Source Lords, a Karkadrak of Corn. and he's got 20 Chaos Warriors of Nurgle with the icon, 10 Knights of Corn. Ten Chosen of Slanesh. Nope, Ten Chosen of Corn. I just automatically thought they were Slanesh. Ten Chosen of Corn with the Banner of Rage, so they are always wounding on twos. In addition to Corn, just giving them plus one attack on the charge. 
Uh, and then 10 more Warriors of Nurgle. Um, I like... I've, I've been just... I've been super happy with my 10 Warriors of Nurgle. Um, so good to see lots of Warriors. Uh, and then he's got the Mind Stealer Spheranx, Spheranx, whatever, it's a Sphinx. Um, so that's the thing that beginning of combat, pick somebody within 9 inches and it's a bravery check or they strike last, which can be just crushing or do nothing against, like, you know, Undead, who are all leadership 10. Um, so really a toss-up on that one. I like the list, low, though. Um, I still think that Slanesh is the best on the Chosen with the banner, but um, Corn could be fun as well. Um, Graham Rand has an All Herds list in Beasts. The Bray Shaman, a Zangor Shaman, Grashrak Fellhoof, and a Beast Lord. Um, don't know what this special dude does. I think he, well, looks like he's a caster. He's got a spell. Uh, then we've got 2 by 20 Gores, 10 Ungores, 2 Gargants, um, the rest of Grashrak's crew. And we've got six Beast of Zangor, sorry, Beast of Chaos Zangor Enlightened, um, just on foot, I guess, not the ones on discs. Uh, and then six Bulgors. So this seems pretty darn good. It's got a couple hammers. Um, love the Gargants, as always. Um, they've been very good for a while, we think. My, my group thinks. <laughs> uh, and then All Herd, I think. All heard, I think, is bringing back gores and stuff, so the 2x20 should be should be good. And they have 2-inch range now, so they can actually get a decent number of attacks later, you know, especially later in the game when your rend is high with the herdstone, that can that can add up. Uh, Harry Isaacson with the filth bringers, he always brings the rock coven, and it looks like he has it once again. So three rock bringer sorcerers in the coven. Gut Rot Spume, one, two, three, four units of Plate Bearers, and an Incarnate. Uh, and then he also has, in this version of the list, uh, two, two, four? I guess this is a unit of four flies, because it's 4 So a unit of four mortal flies. Um, yep, it's Nargle. It's good right now. Uh, Jacob Brandon bringing the Cruel Boys back out, as he is wont to do. He is taking Crumplem all this time. We've we've talked a lot about how like whichever, whether you take whether you take Wog or Crump them all, it always ends up being the wrong one based on like who you face at the tournament. So it's it's really like a coin coin flip that you always lose somehow. <laughs> uh, but he's got Gobsprack, uh, three units of Swamp Colors, so they've got Blizzard, Miasma, and Choking Mist, uh, and then the Sludge Raker, of course. Uh, with Snoopa Sneaky, the Morkside Pebble, and he's taking Smellion, which is new. Um, I know he's not taken that before, so interesting to switch up the mount trait. Um, oh my gosh, I forget what Smellion even does. Is that you can't be wounded in combat on better than four up? Am I making things up? Might be making things up. We're going to find out. Oh, nope, nope. Mount traits, where are you? There we go. Ah, it's subtract one to hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons. If it has that target this model, if it hasn't charged. All right. So if the Sludge Raker didn't charge that turn, he's minus one to hit in combat. Great. Uh, then he's got two by ten gut rippers, ten slitters, his standard three by six bolt boys, and four daggets stab lads. Um, so this is identical to what he's run before, but with a different mount trait on the Sludge Raker, I believe. Do, do, do. All right, moving on. James uh, O'Brien from Tough Crowd has Knight's Excelsior. He's just got the um, five Knight Vexilla with Meteoric Standard, um, Mortal Wound, Spam, uh, along with the Imperident to bring all the Annihilators down. Well, to bring one unit of Annihilators down per turn, down within seven instead of nine. Um, so he's got four by three of the two up save shield annihilators and then two by three of the grand hammers. Um, he's got the far striders. I forget what exactly they do, but it's three model little war cry band. And then five hunters of Huanchi with starstone bolas. Look at this. Look at this. I knew I wasn't wrong. 
Uh, and he also has the Everblaze comment. So the Imperident has Arcane Tome and Master of Magic to get down the Everblaze comment. So yeah, it seems like it seems like a lot of Stormcast players are really valuing the the comment these days, which is interesting. Um, Jason Straub is another Hollow Morn. I think this is Hollow Morn number three. Uh, again, with the double Arch Regent, he's got double Marrow Scroll Heralds, and that rounds out um, the hero selection. Then it looks like it is 20 Crypt Ghouls, 6 and 9 Horrors, 2x3 Morbeg Mor Knights, um, 10, 5? I don't know if 140 gives you 5 or 10 Crypt Guard, but whatever. One unit of unreinforced Crypt Guard, and then a unit of, I think, 20 Royal Beast Flayers. Um, so this is identical to the list, I believe. I believe this is identical to the list that I played against um, at the RTT that Corey, uh, not Corey, um, that Bill Hennessy ran. Um, so yeah, I guess this tells me what Bill changed from his list because he doesn't have the um, he doesn't have the crypt guard anymore as well. That's the thing I was forgetting. Uh, it was super good. Thacker good. Should do well. Um, Jeremy Vessier. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's very French. And it's been a decade since I took French. Um, Jeremy is playing Illuminia, and he actually has his... He has a 30-minute whole, very detailed uh, YouTube video out about his list. Uh, a preview of his thing. Uh, his list for this tournament. So I'm not going to talk about it. You can just go watch his video. And it'll be much more informative than me. Uh, oh my god, we have another Quattos Claw. Jeremy Williams from Wicked Dicey. I love it. Um, with a Star Master and a Star Priest, then two by six, well, six Croxagore, six Croxagore Warspond, 20 Soros Warriors, three Pterodon Riders, five Hunters of Wanchi with Starstone Bullas, Engine of the Gods, and then he's got Prismatic Palisade and Gravetide. I want to like Palisade, I've thought about taking it before, and it just doesn't seem to do anything, because if you cast it, and you're, you cast it in your hero phase, and then the enemy can just dispel it in their turn before they shoot, so like, it doesn't I don't know. It doesn't really help. They have to, like... They have to let you... <laughs> they have to let you do it, essentially, um, when it's trivial to stop. Which is not good. Um, man, I love I love Agrodons. I'm surprised to see all these Croxagores. I guess the points went down. Um, but that surprises me. We've got Joe Shoemaker from Bottom Table Bullies with another Grinning Blades list. He's got uh, same hero setup as uh, Jacob did, but instead of the 10 Hobgrots and the Stab Lads, he's got the third unit of Gut Ripples. Um, so other than that, it's basically identical to Jacob's list, except that he has Weirden on the Snatch of Boss. Um, yeah, three by 10 Gut Ripples, three by six Bolt Boys. Cool. Pretty standard Cruel Boys at this point. Can't wait for wave two of Cruel Boys to give us some more options. Uh, John Baker, the man himself, taking an Astral Templars list with Slaughter of Sorcery, so no wizards in here. Uh, he's got Pontifex Zenestra allied in, which seems amazing. I'm still surprised I don't see it more often. Uh, he's got a Knight in Cantor. Oh, he, oh, well, I guess he's just going to get this guy killed. Never mind. He does have... He has two casters. He has Slaughter of Sorcery, but he has... A Knight and Cantor and Adjudicator with Arcane Tome. So I guess he's just trying to get these guys killed. And then I scroll down and I suddenly see just a thing of beauty, which is three Vanguard Hunter units, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Stormstrike Chariots, the Comet, and a unit of Aether Wings. John, I love you. This is great. I I hope this is just a ton of fun to play. I hope honestly I hope I play against it. That's that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan Weaver from Warp Hammer is playing OBR. This is, let's see, Null Myriad. So everyone's just ignoring on a 4-up now instead of a 2-up like it used to be. Uh, that was the nerf they got. Uh, but it is Archon, Elige Cavalos with Arcane Tome. That's interesting. Um, and Mighty Archaeosian. So he ignores Rend. He ignores negative modifiers to save, not positive. Then we've got four Morgast Archai. A unit of Death Riders, a unit of 10 Mortec Guard, and then we've got 
the Manfred um, Regiment of Renown. So that's Manfred, two units of Felbats, and a unit of Graveguard. And I believe he can like bring back uh, these units once they've died, like once each. Um, so I've seen I've seen people saying that this is a pretty good um, regiment of renown, and a couple people have been taking it. So good luck. Uh, we talked about Night Haunt. We've got another Slaves to Darkness list. This is Knights of the Empty Throne instead of Host. Uh, so this is Bellicor, a Sorcerer Lord, six Varengard of Corn as the general with Fell Spears, of course. We have another six Varengard of Nurgle this time, though, with the Fell Spears. Um, which is interesting. I feel like if you're taking Nurgle, you're, you're trying to grind it out. And I see people take like maybe three Fell Spears and three in Sorceld in that case. Um, but whatever, they're a guard, they still hit like a truck. Uh, we've got five cast knights of Nurgle with the Nurgle banner. So that opens up the tactic to get them into the enemy territory. Um, and then we got nine untamed beasts and five flesh hounds uh, as an ally. I really like the Flesh Hounds as the ally because they uh, give you an unwind. They give you an extra unwind, which is cool. All right, let's see. We're 40 minutes in. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. We're, we're more than halfway through these. Uh, our one KO list is Josh Kohler. I looked at this before just to see, like, their points have all gone up on, like, what fits in a KO list now. Looks like the answer is a code right. Brock Grungson an Aetheric Navigator, my most hated model in the game, and an Endrin Master. So no um, no Chemist and no Admiral in this list. I guess Brock is an Admiral of the special variety. Uh, then it's 3 by 10 Arcanauts, 6 Endrin Riggers, 2 by 5 Thunders, and then another unit of 3 Endrin Riggers. And this has a Frigate and a Gun Hauler. It's actually very light on the big boats. Um, you, I feel like you almost always have seen two big boats, and especially now, like the ironclad points went down. So interesting that uh, he's taking like all of these arcanauts and things, and not like an ironclad. Um, interesting list. It's. I feel like Chaos points have gone up enough that like. I don't know. This doesn't make me cry just looking at it. <laughs> I feel like there's hope. Um, Ten thunders is like not bad. Uh, six and three Endrin Riggers is also, like, not bad. Like, two by nine Endrin Riggers and two Frigates will just delete you. But six and three, like, that's survivable. Uh, and then with only one big boat, like, this isn't this isn't all fitting in the big boat. You know, these, these Arcanauts are probably just hanging out on objectives on foot. Um, yeah, very curious to see how he does. Um, we got a not checked in, no list. Ugh, Josh Medlock, come on, come on, get it together. Uh, Sylvaneth dropped Keith Bono with Fuethan IDK. So he's got, I assume this is the setup people call the Smash King, and the Celestin Prime as an ally. Interesting. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sharks. Yeah, so two by three from the Shivers, and then one single. And then a Leviathan. Cool. All right. It's a bunch of sharks. I hope I can kill sharks. <laughs> no idea if I can. Uh, Ken Hot Doggler's got our second Knights of the Empty Throne list. So he's got a Karkadrak uh, of Nurgle with the Arcane Tome. And that's just, uh, it says Warp Reality. That's just a bug in the app. Uh, the Sorcerer Lord on Manticore, who I, what, when I first read the, the Slaves of Darkness book, I like wanted to take the Sorcerer Lord on the Manticore. And I don't have the model, and also I don't think it's very good, so I never have. But props to him. Uh, he's got Demonic Speed on it and Master of Magic, um, so you can make something charge 3d6. Uh, and then he has, let's see, 10 Knights of Nurgle with the banner, 6 Varengard of Corn with the Spears, 2x3 Varengard of Nurgle with the Demon Forged Blades. So that was, that's kind of what I was talking about, is that if the Nurgle ones are trying to grind it out, you're not getting as much use out of the Fell Spears, I guess. Um, so it doesn't shock me to to see that setup. Uh, Mark from the Mid Atlantic Molly Whoppers with another Fuethan list. Again with the Smashy Smash King, a 
Allied Steam Tank Commander. That is not what I expected to see allied in from cities. That is cute. Um, just kind of a... He's just a two-up save tank to be an anvil, I guess. Uh, then he's got the Tidecaster. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sharks. So no Leviathan, just lots of sharks. Uh, that's great. I don't know how the sharks are after the Foython rule change. I know it's not... Um, they, whatever, they, they changed what they do on, on their sixes or whatever to hit. Uh, I'm going to look it up right now because I have the time, I believe. Um, now I'm remembering I don't have the IDK book in my app, so I can't look it up. All right, I'll look it up after I'm done talking. Uh, do, 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 drop. We've got our first Iron Jaws list. Looking at win rates on like Wohammer and the AOS, the you know, the Warhammer community meta and et cetera, et cetera, um, Honest Wargamer, Iron Jaws just seem like they're in a rough spot right now. Their their win rate is not high. <laughs> it's quite low. Um, so I'm not surprised to not see as many Iron Jaws. Uh, but anyway, he's got uh, Mega Boss and Maw Crusher, two War Chanters, so very light on the heroes. Uh, and then two by six Gore Gruntas, three Gore Gruntas, and ten Brutes. And then he's got the Maw Grunta Gouger, yes. So he's got he's got the big pig, just the, the most basic big pig. Um, cool. Good luck. It's going to be an uphill battle these days. Uh, let's see. Matthew Obringer. We have another host of the Ever Chosen list. Uh, so we've had two, two hosts and two Knights of the Empty Throne so far. This is an Archeon list. Um, I believe, I think this, I think this is the same list. Um, I believe he won the RTT I was at a couple weekends ago with this list. So he's doing well with it. Uh, it's Archeon, Sorcerer Lord, uh, Karkadrak of Slanesh, and he's got 10 Nerva Warriors, 5 Corn Knights with the Banner of Rage, and then 10 Chosen of Slanesh with the Banner of Screaming Flesh. Um, it's a very interesting list, and I'm, I, I'm curious about how he plays it, because he did very well. Do, 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 Nick, Nick G, Nick Gataski, the man himself, my good friend, uh, Holding it down with me in Club CCG. <laughs> Throw back to Warhammer Fantasy. Um, he's running Starborn. Love him anyway, you know, despite his flaws. <laughs> he's got a Star Priest, a Star Seer, a Croak, an Astrolith Bearer, and a Star Master. Uh, so one more hero than the other list we saw from Starborn. Uh, then he's got 2x5 Source Guard, 20 Source Warriors, and 3 Endless Spells. He's got Portal, Maelstrom, and Gravetide. Um, so yeah, really minimal bodies, really counting on summoning things in. Uh, Nick Grimnir, also his real last name, has Greyfeard in Fire Slayers. So he's got a Magmadroth, Runefather, a Runesmiter, and a Battlesmith. Then he's got 10 Berserkers, 10 Berserkers, Hearthguard Berserkers, I should say. Um, one unit with the axes, one with the pole axes. Uh, then he's got ten Vulkite Berserkers uh, with War Pick and Sling Shield, sure, whatever that means. A Molten Infernoth, and then he's got Gotrek and one Grimwrath Berserker. Love, love to see some little single Berserkers running around. That's cool. Don't love Gotrek, but you know, what can you do? I have a Demon Prince to turn off his ward save, so hopefully I can kill me a, a Gotrek at some point. Uh, Rainer from Terran Battle Friends with yet another Hollowmorn. I don't think we've seen a hollow or a, a feck that's not Hollowmorn. Uh, so he's got uh, this is our second Usheron. He's got a Gore Warden General, uh, Vargulf Courtier, uh, and then he's got let's see three by six Morbeg Knights. Cool. And then this must be a reinforced unit of Crypt Guard who are, I don't know if they're going to be hanging out with Usheron, because I think it's very, very hard to keep him with, wholly within three of the of the unit. Um, you, you have to, like, wrap. I think you have to, like, wrap all the way around him with the Crypt Guard or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, that's interesting. Just just going super, super hard on the Morbeg Knights, and one of them can come down from reserve with the Gord Warden. 
but he does not have an arch regent to make them move d6 with the arch regent or scroll spell after they are deployed so that uh that deep strike is much less scary here um so i think that's not the scariest fi uh, flesh eater course list we've seen um i'll leave my list to the end we're almost done everyone else scott from tilt has seraphon fangs of sotek this is a full complement of six heroes. We got a Starseer, Slan Starmaster, Croak, Pterodon Chief, Astrolith Bear, and then the the spicy addition is Celestine Prime. So Croak and the Prime is back. I feel like there was some witty thing that somebody called that, and I can't remember. Uh, then it's ten Skinks, five Source Guard, ten Warriors. Is all the rest of your bodies on the board to start? And only two endless spells, the Maelstrom and the Quicksilver Swords. Da -da -da, Scott Huber, our second Skaven from Team Big Chungus, has a Plague Furnace, uh, two Seers on Screaming Bell, a Gracier on Foot with Blizzard and Horfrost, uh, a Plague Priest on Foot with Rabid Rabid, and then Skavik, the special one, with Disease Disease. Um, so this can, I believe, get the... Um, the three prayers tactic and he's got 15 and 5 plague sensor bearers 2 by 20 clan rats a hell pit abomination which is scary but very random uh a warp lightning vortex endless spell and a grave tide and then the rest of scabbix plague pack um seems solid it's two bells i don't know i i feel like this this was what got nerfed very very slightly with a light touch on points um but still seems pretty good uh thaddeus from bottom table bullies has sylvaneth oakenbrow with belthanos durthu a warsong revenant a tree lord two by five tree revenants uh who are great they teleport it's amazing ten dryads the glade worm that's a that's a thing you don't see very often uh, and then six Karnoth Hunters with the swords, so the mortal mortal wounds, extra mortals on sixes, I believe. Don't remember what the Glade Worm does. I think it's worth looking up. Distracted by the texts on my phone. Sylvaneth, War Scrolls, here we go. Glade Worm, 30 points. Summon it. Range of six inches, so that's very short. Moves eight and can fly. After it has moved, roll a dice for each unit within an inch of it. On a three up, they suffer D3 mortals. So, all right, a little bit of a little bit of mortal wound damage. And then after it has moved, ah, here's here's the other thing. So after it's moved, roll a dice for each Sylvaneth unit within six. On a three up, they heal D3 wounds. So you're doing damage to the enemy and you're healing yourself. Seems legit for 30 points. I don't hate it. Uh, maybe not as good as like the plus three move and charge, but but good. Um, all right, after that, Thomas Ling with a Heartwood list, another Bell Thanos, Arch Revenant, Warsong Revenant. And then we've got two by six Karnoth Hunters. One of them have the bows, one of them have the swords. Five Tree Revenants. Oh, he's got a Glade Worm as well. I wonder if it went down in points or if people are just like valuing it now for other reasons. Um, and he's got, uh, to round it off, he's got five Gossamid Archers. Um, they're they're kind of hard to catch and just a little bit of shooting screeny kind of thing. Doo -doo -doo. Our second Iron Gels list is Tim Horwath from Bottom, bottom Table Bullies. Uh, he's in Da Chapa's. He's got a Mega Boss on Maul Crush, uh, two War Chanters, and two Weird Knob, weird knob Shamans. Sorry. And then a Madcap allied in uh, from Gitz. I am more scared of the Madcap than I used to be. Um, his War Scroll spell, if, if it's set up to go off, is very good. It's every every enemy unit within six inches takes D6 mortal wounds. And there's no like, oh, roll a three up. It's just every unit within six, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and it caught me off guard because I had like half my army within six inches of the Madcap, uh, which was a bad plan. Uh, so fun little fun little addition there uh, as an ally. Then he's got unit of Ard boys, another unit of Ard boys, a unit of brutes, 
and then six and three gore branches. I don't know, pretty standard. It's, it's hard to get too creative with with iron gels, I think. It's just what your mix is between foot things and, and pigs, right? And this is pretty balanced. Uh, Tom Crowley, Knights of the Pond. That's the locals at Westminster. He's got cities with Ionis allied in. Uh, this is in Lethys, so all of the um, all of the non-wizard characters, I believe, become priests and get this prayer Morda's embrace, uh, which I don't recall off the top of my head what it does. <laughs> I'll look it up. Um, so yeah, Ionis, uh, the two Warforgers, both have Blizzard. Um, the Marshal on Griffin with Grizzled Vet, Lance, Sigmarite Warhammer, that's like the standard setup on him. Uh, and then he's now a priest. The Cavalier Marshal is now a priest. And then Pontifex Zenestra is obviously a priest to begin with. And he's got two by five Cavaliers, the Wilder Core Hunters, 10 Steel Helms, and a Command Core. Um, so yeah, interesting. I haven't seen Lethus. The addition of Ionis is interesting, uh, and it's very priest heavy, obviously, but like very light on actual bodies on the table. Uh, but I think it's it's got a lot of tricks up its sleeve, so um, you know I, I think it can do well. Uh, Tom Long from the bottom table bullies is I think our only Suns player with a Gatebreaker, Broad, a War Stomper, and then four little Gargants. Um, I haven't seen small Gargants in a while, so that's cool. Uh, Travis Roth, who is in my group, uh, playing Cities. He's got the Griffin with uh, not quite the same setup. He's got an Arcane Tome to be the only caster there. Um, oh no, there's a Battle Mage as well. Sorry, so just another cast. Uh, Freegal Cavalier Marshal, as I said, a Battle Mage, and then a Steam Tank Commander. And he's got two units of Cavaliers, a unit of 10 Fusiliers, two units of 10 Steel Helms, and a Steam Tank and to round it all off, of course, the Free Guild Command Core. So this is a lot more bodies than that previous list we just looked at. Um, hope he does well. I do like the Steam Tank Commander and then one Steam Tank. You don't have to go all in into Steam Tanks, um, but they are good. Uh, almost second to last, the penultimate list, Flesh Eater Quartz. And this will shock you to hear that William from Tilt is running Hollowmorn. This has Gourmain, which is cool. Two Marrow Scrolls here. Uh, one is the General with Cool Taskmaster and the Charnel Vestments to make it a Priest. Uh, and then two Arch Regents. Uh, so this seems like a very good hero setup. The two Arch Regents and then one or two Marrow Scrolls. Uh, that seems like pretty optimal. Uh, two by 20 Crypt Ghouls, nine Horrors, and then two by six Crypt Flares. Um, it surprises me a little bit to see 2x6 of the flares without the flare hero who can, like, what is it, double their damage or something? Uh, <laughs> which is good if, like, he hits and wounds with his shooting attack. Um, but yeah, the flares are interesting, and I believe, I, I think if I'm remembering right, they can pick up, like, a hero and take it with them when they fly, which is cool. Uh, and then finally, last but not least, Zach Frederick from the Bridge Trolls with Boulderhead. Uh, and I said I was going to skip all the Boulderhead. Great. Cool. Uh, so that leaves my list. Um, got a minute 30 here to stay under an hour. Um, so yeah, just to go over this, um, I had taken out... So I would taken out the Theradons. For my last practice game because they just as i said in my rtt recap like the theradons were just not doing anything for me in like any game and even this even the times when like they should have done something they were just whiffing which is obviously like you can't judge based off of like a, a set of bad dice like bad luck in one game uh, but the theradons were just not doing anything for me so i'd taken out the theradons and put in the uh chaos lord on foot and then a second unit of um, Chaos Warriors of Nurgle, because, as I said before, the, the 10 Warriors of Nurgle have just been like MVPs for me every game. So now I have two units of them instead of one. Uh, and I switched from Host of the Everchosen to Kabbalists for more magic. Um, the, uh, the the Rally and Host had like not been doing me any good, really. Um, even though it seems like cute on paper and like it could come up big at some point. 
So I decided to just not worry about the rally. Um, and then in my last practice game, I, I just kept this as a two drop. Uh, so I only had the one banner. And I made that the... I made it the banner on the knights. And I did really miss the screaming banner on the Slanesh Chosen. Um, like, I, I, just, I just went into something, you know, whatever. I went into a bunch of, like, Blood Warriors. I was playing Corn. Uh, my friend Nick, and not Nick G, Nick J. Um, and they, like, I was just like, man, if I had if I had, had like, ten more attacks, it would have been great. <laughs> Maybe I could have cleared, cleared that. I, I lost that game. I probably still would have lost. Um, but so, instead of a two-drop now, I decided to just, I decided, like, getting first turn is not that important. Uh, so I went to one battle regiment and warlord. Um, so to do that, I had to take out the cockatrice to throw in a sorcerer lord um, to have four heroes because you need three for the warlord and then one for a battle regiment. Um, so cockatrice is out, sorcerer lord is in. I made him undivided and gave him cat conduit and demonic speed. Um, so demonic speed is very nice to get the nurgle knights up in somebody's face, like turn one, give them three d six charge. Or like turbocharge the the chariot to get it somewhere with run and charge. So that would be, you know, <laughs> move twelve, run an extra d6, use your once per game run and charge to go three d6. Can be very very fast. Not that the chariot does much. Um, so yeah, so that is my setup now, and the warlord lets me take the second knight. Or sorry, the the second banner, even though I'm not in host of the ever chosen. So I'm back to having the chaos knights with the eroding icon, the nurgle knights. Um, and the ten chosen of Slanesh with with their banner. Uh, then of course rounding it out, I've got the Corvus Cabal, who I very strongly considered swapping out for the Unmade, because I never seem to use the Corvus Cabal that well. But it does just seem to have a nice thing in my back pocket to to have something that can drop in from reserve in the backfield. Um, I did end up loving at RTT my little one cast chariot of Nurgle. Um, it's just a good fast little thing to run around and get a tactic on like the edge and then get back in for one of the charge uh, tactics or just like pin something that's not super strong on the edge uh, as well um, and like even even just stuff like if I send this into chaff like it's not killy enough that it's like gonna kill the chaff like it'll do some damage but it's not gonna just like wipe some chaff unit and then it'll be stuck in, like, I don't know. Hopefully it will be stuck in, like, for my next turn to retreat and be, like, one of the units to retreat for um, Bait and Trap or something like that. I just, I don't know. I love my little chariot. <laughs> it made me happy. Um, switching things up, this also let me take Spellcasting Savant. I talked about how bad Slaughter of Sorcery ended up being for me in this list. Um, well, the version of this list that I was running. Um, so I spell casting Savant, and it's not on the Sorcerer Lord, it's on the Chaos Lord, um, because he becomes in Kabbalists, obviously a caster, um, and he has the bodyguard save onto whoever he picks as his retinue at the start of the game, either Warriors or Chosen. Um, so yeah, he, and yeah, and also having, having him, having the Chaos Lord and the Sorcerer Lord now frees up um, one of the problems I talked about was my Karkadrak was Slanesh, and that meant he was kind of tethered to the Chosen to give them run and charge, which felt very bad. Um, so now the Chaos Lord is Slanesh, so he can stay next to the Chosen and give them their command to run and charge. Um, he's got Shaman of the Chilled Lands, so he has Blizzard and Horfrost, and he also has Binding Damnation if I want to make something straight last. Um, that frees up the Karkadrak to be Nurgle. So he... Um, he's got Nurgle, he's got the Conqueror's Crown, so anything of wounds one or two within six of him, of the enemy, can't contest objectives. And then in Kabbalists, he, he also gets Blizzard. So this is just, he's just like this great little solo operator that can run off, he's hard to kill with Nurgle and a three up, five up versus mortals. Um, nine wounds, he's turning off, you know, if he's off on the side, like, and the enemy has a little chaff over there, he can just turn off them counting on objectives, like he doesn't even need to kill them. Um, I think he's just a great little piece set up like this. Um, the Demon Prince now um, is still Nurgle, but he now gets Flaming Weapon, so he can go to Ren 2-3 damage on his 7 axe attacks if he gets Flaming Weapon off, which is great. 
Um, and then the Sorcerer Lord is Undivided. So um, Undivided because he has Chaotic Conduit to perhaps get the... Um, you just have to have a hero, pick a hero, and roll on the Eye of the, eye of the Gods with that hero um, for that tactic. So he can get that by just casting Chaotic Conduit, theoretically. It's almost a second magic dominance. Um, and since he's undivided, you know, he's not... It helps him not turn himself into a spawn <laughs> when he does that. Um, so yeah, I am excited to run this. Uh, I hope it goes better than last time I took Slave to Darkness at this GT last year. Um, this, I like... I was like speed painting last year, getting it just ready to take to the battle for Alzheimer's. Battle to end Alzheimer's, not for Alzheimer's. We're against Alzheimer's. Um, I've been speed painting Chaos last year to take. Uh, and I went one and four. I played two KO, which made me super sad because they were even stronger back then. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I do well. I, I feel like, I feel like with this, I could go like three, two. I went one and two at the RTT, and I think this list is better than what I had there. Um, and looking at the field, there's there's some things there's some things I feel okay against. Uh, there's some things I don't, but <laughs> we'll see how it, how it pans out. So yeah, thank you for listening. I went just slightly over because I talked about my list for longer than I wanted to, but oh well. Um, I will see some of you who listen to this probably this weekend, and everyone else, take it easy. Have good games. Love you all.